Coach Michael here at Saibono Discovery Center. I'm going to be explaining this circuit over six short videos so that you can follow along at home. In the next video, we'll have a look at this uh, fascinating uh, little instrument. These are rows and these are columns. If you look at this clear breadboard, you'll see that these things run crosswise. We're going to start off by placing these transistors. I'm going to put up the diagram so you can see what I would call a suggested layout. So you don't have to follow the layout exactly. Uh, you can just follow the suggested layout. You want to put the transistor in like this. We're going to place another transistor on the other side of what I call the Grand Canyon. This line down the middle of the breadboard breaks the electrical connections there. Notice both transistors are facing that way. In other words, the flat sides is there and the round sides is there. I'm going to put these LEDs with the cathode, which is the short leg, in where the collector leg is in the breadboard. So we're putting those there, like that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put a current limiting resistor over here. We're going to put one on the other side as well. So hopefully my hands are not covering up and obscuring what I'm doing. So notice how these parts connect by being in the same row. So when we talk about breadboards in the breadboarding video, I'll explain that in more detail. Sometimes the resistors resist going into the board, but notice how this resistor is in the same row there, but it's in a different over here. We're going to put this resistor over here. This capacitor forms part of a RC network, a resistance capacitance network. We're going to put this capacitor into the circuit. There's the minus leg, there's the plus leg. If you look at the schematic diagram, what you'll notice is that this capacitor works with this resistor over there to form the RC network. The positive side of the capacitor goes to the collector. And so we can place it over there. And the negative side of the capacitor goes to the resistor, the high value resistor over there. Now what we do is we have a jumper wire colored yellow here because it's inside of the circuit, it's not up at positive or down at minus. And that will bring the minus side of this capacitor down to connect to the base of the other transistor. This is transistor 1 in the schematic diagram. This is transistor 2. This being transistor 1 means that that's resistor 1. So now we bring the resistor 1 down to the base of the opposite transistor there. And we've got the same effect where we've got these two wires that cross over. Can you see how they cross over? Just like in the schematic diagram. Across this gap here, there's no electrical connection. So we actually do need to make a connection there. So we're going to place a jumper wire in the top row, which is the positive power bus, power rail, if you want to call it that. And the two emitters, just like in the circuit diagram, we need to connect up the two emitters. And that makes up the minus power rail. So we put these parts here like so, and we place this piece over there like that. So this is our negative power rail going across the bottom. There's positive there, negative at the bottom. I'm also going to put up the circuit diagram again on the screen now. So if you look at that, the circuit 
uh, is mostly complete, but I've just noticed we've got a spare capacitor lying around here. And so this is transistor one, transistor one, transistor two, and capacitor two corresponds to transistor two, resistor two corresponds to transistor two. This is transistor one, resistor one, and here is capacitor one, which is not yet on the circuit. So when we plug this in, we must just make sure that the longer lead, which is the positive lead, the shorter lead, which is corresponding to this marking over there, which shows negative. So the negative side of this needs to be in there with the resistor one. And the positive end of this capacitor needs to go into the same row on the breadboard as the collector leg of this transistor. So we'll have a look in video two at what is a transistor, what are the legs, in other words, collector base emitter, and how does a transistor actually work. Purpose of this video is just to build this little circuit and show you the circuit so that hopefully you can get inspired to build this at home. So what we're gonna do now so we're going to put a decent quality battery on here, which is in this instance, the energizers, they're not cheap to buy, but they are much, much cheaper in the long run than cheap batteries. In this channel, we'll also be looking at rechargeable batteries, and I'll be explaining how you can use rechargeable batteries. So there I've connected up the circuit now. You can see it running on your screen. And let's swap cameras and have a look down to see if we get a clearer view over here. So there's our little circuit and it's running at a nice pace. Um, so thank you very much for watching this video. And I hope that you'll subscribe and stay with for this little journey so that you can learn how the circuit actually works. Something that's going to be quite surprising for you if you're interested in electronics, is that we end up with a negative voltage right in the middle of the circuit. And it's a weird sort of phenomenon, but it's rather fascinating. So I'd love to share with you how that happens.